Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about what I learned at Exit Convention, part two. What I learned about was mental toughness and taking risks. So stick around and hear more about it. So one of the speakers I had the opportunity to listen to was Jimmy Chin. What an amazing person. The stuff that he does just absolutely blows my mind. He's best known for making the documentary Free Solo, which won an Academy Award. What it's about is his friend Alex, who wants to free solo, so that means no ropes, no gear, just a little chalk bag, and his bare hands and feet. So he's climbing, he's free soloing this big rock face named El Capitan in California, in the Redwoods. Now Jimmy grew up thinking that there was only a few career paths in his life. His family migrated from China and he thought that you could only be like a doctor, a professor, or a scientist. By the time he got into college, he had gotten into rock climbing, he started doing it more, and he started all of the extreme adventurous sports. And now what he does is he prides himself on filming people, on photography, but what he does is so much different than other people because he prides himself on not having the person that he's filming have to change the way you know, they snowboard, or the way they climb, the way they ski, the way they raft, because he promises that he's not going to slow them down, and they're not going to have to change the way they do things, because he's going to keep up with them. It took him a very long time to decide to, to film Free Solo, because there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but he was afraid that the distraction of the cameras might affect his buddy, and obviously if he falls, he is going to die. There's really no way around it. So him and his crew were reluctant to film it. They finally picked it up, do the free trial on Disney Plus and go watch Free Solo. It's a National Geographic film, but it's very riveting and nerve wracking and intense there at the end as he's making that, that ascent, so it's worth it. But he talked about risk and risk management because what he does, whether it's, you know, rock climbing a huge face or whether it's climbing Everest or skiing down it. Uh, he's always searching for that big thing that no one else has done. He's always living constantly on a razor thin edge of what he's able to do. Everything he has to do has to be calculated, it has to be thought through, he has to be 100% focused or it can lead to death. So one of the things that he lives by that he was taught is that there are two great risks in life. Either risking too little or risking too much. So he has to take his risk and he has to learn that, that risk management and obviously he's failed a lot in his life, luckily not to the extreme of dying or getting physically hurt. But his main takeaway from failure, and of course anyone's going to tell you this, is learn to leverage it, progress from it, and then move past it. You know, so many people believe that we should learn from our failures and not let it stop us, but not many people do. Leveraging it learning from it, and then progressing past it. So when you're taking risks, there's always variables you can control and variables you can't control. Those variables you can't control, just stay away from them. But those variables you can control, learn them, study them, and use them to your best advantage. So if you've just been sitting on the couch your whole life not taking those risks, have you been wanting to do something but just too afraid to do it? Well, take that risk because in most of our lives, if we start something and we fail, it's a learning experience. It's not like we're climbing Mount Everest and if we fail, we could physically get hurt. So what's the problem? Why haven't you taken those risks? All it is is a learning experience. That's all it is. If you do fail, so what? Learn from it, move on, progress, and become a better person because of it. Just remember that most risks calculated correctly are worth taking. After college, Jimmy Chin ended up living in his car and he went, I believe it was to the Redwoods and just started climbing. And his parents, obviously, they didn't want that for him. They're always worried about him. And his mom would always say, of course I'm worried about you. In our language, we don't even have a word for what you do. That was also a big risk for his parents to allow him to let him do those things, but it led to incredible things. It's led to him catching things on camera that no one else has ever captured or maybe won't ever capture. And it's led to him 
winning an Academy Award, which I'm sure his parents are pretty proud about. Another speaker I listened to that was so incredible, she'd come onto the stage and she'd light it up and she just inspired you with her story is Stephanie Decker. She was in the house with her kids one day and a storm rolled in and that storm quickly became a stage four, stage five, I think those are the stages, a tornado. She was trying to get out of the house, the tornado quickly hits the home, she throws her kids on the ground and she jumps over them and she protects them from all the rubble that's falling. Obviously, one of the most terrifying experiences you're ever going to go through. But after the tornado had passed by, she realized that both of her kids were unharmed. She sent them for help. Rescue team came out and got her. And she had eight broken ribs, a punctured lung. Her, her legs were cut up, bleeding everywhere, almost bled to death. She ended up losing both of her legs. She's a double amputee. Often when kids look at her and they obviously don't know how to take it because she has these metal legs attached to her body, she starts to pretend like she's a robot. So she's in Hawaii, she's walking down the beach and someone runs up to her, that didn't happen in Hawaii, did it? Tell me the sharks didn't get your legs. And she looked at her straight in the eyes and said, yep, a shark got me, it happened right out there in that ocean. Freaked the person out. She was laughing about it later on, but that person probably isn't going to ever go into the water again. So she's full of that light, that positivity. She wants to spread love and joy. She had so many reasons to decide, I'm not gonna keep living my life how I want to. I have no legs, my house was destroyed, I went through this terrifying experience. But one thing she did have was her family was safe because of her. Instantly, she started thinking of ways she could help other people. She wanted the best doctors, she wanted the best nurses, she wanted the best health care so she could learn to walk again, get the best prosthetics with her legs. And that's what she, one of the things she does now, she helps amputees get the best prosthetics and she also helps them through their process. She loves kids, she loves sports, and so she put those things together and she helps those children that many people think won't ever be able to play sports learn how to play. She's helped a quadruple, so all four of their limbs, amputee, learn how to play basketball. Uh, when she was there, she showed us a picture of this sweet little boy. No arms, no legs. She fitted a glove and worked on this device that he could attach to his arm that helped him learn how to pitch a baseball. So it's just incredible the things that she's doing and, and that's what you need to do in your life. You take those failures like we talked about, you take those struggles and you flip them on their head and you help other people because she knows what they're going through. She knows the best way to help those, those amputees. She knows the best way to help these children. And she has that amazing mental toughness. She says, mental toughness separates the bad from the good and the good from the great. That's one thing she learned growing up that has helped her through this struggle. And so many people are in awe that she can still be so happy and so positive. But what she tells them is it's a choice. You choose how you'll handle your storm. Don't let the world decide. Don't let your loved ones decide, your family, your friends. You make that choice. Whatever you're going through, whatever tough times you have, you simply say that I'm going to make it through this. You tell yourself what you want the outcome to be. Yeah, it's going to be hard, but that's your choice. So again, just an inspiring individual. And if she is able to go through what she did and still become the person that she is, then, then what excuse do we have? Obviously, there's a lot of people that go through some hard things, but most of us watching this YouTube video haven't lost our legs. We haven't lost our, our home in a tornado. We haven't been through something that traumatizing. So we don't have those excuses. And to those that have been through something that traumatizing, look to Stephanie even more for inspiration. I'll put a description to one of Stephanie's TED Talks. This was quite a few years ago. Uh, she's been featured as you know person of the week. She's been on the Ellen Show, on tons of talk shows. She's won awards. So I'll put that link to the TED Talk in the description so you can watch it and hear her story from her own mouth because it's pretty incredible.